from Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Welcome to the COB, this is all the stuff you need to know in the day in business and markets. My name's Kyle Rotter, I'm of course with Danny Akuye, and uh, well I suppose there's one thing you need to know today and that's, uh, well, it was a big red day. It was a big red day, but um, yeah, that, those, those bond markets, they've been uh, causing a big headache, particularly for Australian equities. I'll say. Well, let's uh, take a look at where the CBO 200 has closed for the day, and it's down 1.6%, not quite at the lows, but... Um, not far off, not it, really. Not far off. So, yeah. um, and I was looking, you know, I'm a simple man, it's a, a little bit of a, a tech head when it comes to, to uh, looking at uh, price action, and uh, 70.50 was a, a sort of a level the market had bounced yes. off previously and um, I don't know where the uh, so 6200 is. 7042, yeah, I've got. So 120 points off on the ASX 200, so 7042. There you go. Someone who um, I would say is a lot smarter than me tweeted today, if you do Dow theory, we have had lower highs and it looks like we're going for a lower low. So mm. unfortunately, if you follow Dow theory, it's, it may not be that positive. Sellers in control of this market right now. Now, let's get to our three, actually before we jump to our three themes, oh no, we, we are going to go to our three themes uh, Friday, I do apologise, um, but uh, having a few issues there actually, but I, I mean really, the, the story of the day is, as you just alluded bond. to, bond markets, yep. pricing in higher for longer interest rates, equities yep. can't cope uh, under Correct. that kind of pressure for now, and it was a broad based sell-off, every sector was in negative territory. Actually, let's let's as we talk, let's jump across some of those sectors. We'll start with the banks. Um, wasn't the worst performing, but well, broad based losses there. All the majors that we like to follow down by more than one percent. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, yes, they were. They actually didn't do too badly. It's the interest rate sensitive sectors, but nevertheless, let's have a look in terms of the miners and see how they travel today. Yeah. Also, not as bad as again some of those interest no. rate sensitive sectors that we will get to in a moment. But again, um, still lower. And I mean, the winners, the, the the leaders were few and far between. The gainers were few and far between. Uh, the tech stocks a little bit more sensitive sensitive to interest rates. Uh, we can see likes of Altium down 3%, Zero pulling back 2%, Wise Tech off 2.4%, Block be it off five. Off, off five. Although you know that's such a wild stock. We it was at is. the top of the top of the um, market yesterday, um, but uh, overall still pulling back from you know relatively elevated levels. I guess it, it had seen a pretty good run over the last few months, but um, still caught in the crosshairs today. And uh, retailers perhaps amongst some of the worst performers. Consumers discretionary down by more than two percent. Um, and real estate stocks were also down. Yes, real estate. Uh, REITs were well. off, um, I'm getting about 2.65% for the REITs. And uh, consumer discretionary off about 2.4%. So all those people probably doing a bit of bottom fishing in those interest rate sensitive sectors, unfortunately, would have had a bit of a whack yeah. over the last two days. Yeah, absolutely stung. Um, there was a little bit of corporate news out today, a yep. lot from the resource space, the Regis Resources said it expects to see our uh, see achieve, sorry, record production for gold in 2023, and that supported its share price quite considerably. That said it had cash and bullion build of $39 million. Um, also, Eris Resources was another in focus. Uh, it withdrew its guidance for the financial year due to production problems at its uh, Jaguar and Mount Collin mines in Queensland. Uh, so uh, not a fantastic story there. And um, actually, IAG, uh, yes. was also a company that we're focusing on. Uh, in the news today, renewed its 2.5% whole of account quota share arrangement with Hanover. How do you pronounce it? Hanover Ray? Hanover Ray? Hanover Re. 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 Yeah. Okay. It's oh, like Munich Re. Like, uh, Big reinsurance companies. Re. Got you. All yeah. right. Sorry. Yeah. Because these guys can't take on board all the risk. Yes. They have to basically, you know, cover, take insurance out from another reinsurer to cover all these catastrophic risks. Yeah, there you it's go. It's a big, big problem. But it was stock of the day. Yeah, and well, who did you speak to? So we had Philip Pepe from Shore and Partners and Claude Walker from A Rich Life. And it was a, well, it was not only a very fun program, but um, yeah, let's listen what they had to say about IAG. IAG gave the market an insight into the price, pre, um, price increases they're putting through. In home, uh, we're looking at price increases of around 20%. Yeah, it's in huge, Australia. isn't it? Motor, 14%, commercial, 15%, then New Zealand, around 20%. Mm. So all these extra reinsurance costs will actually hit us as a consumer in the hip pocket. And if you've got that sort of pricing power, if you're an IAG, 
it is a company worth looking at. Analysts consider this to be fair value because it's had a good run. But for me, a company that demonstrates that sort of pricing power in an industry where interest rate rises actually benefit it, I actually think it's worth looking at. So I'd call it a buy. Um, I would avoid having a long-term holding in insurers just because the dynamic Philip was talking about means that you're basically uh, positioning to suffer if it turns out that there is a lot more extreme river from climate change and that the actuaries are having more difficulty modelling that correctly uh, as opposed to taking the bet that, you know, oh, don't worry about climate change, the you know, pet- pedestrians aren't going to be an, an issue. I think it makes the, 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 the core value out of an insurer is the actuaries who can do all the numbers and get the, get the pricing right. I think that's a lot harder when you're changing a system rapidly as, we, as is occurring in terms of the atmosphere and the concentrations of CO2. So it's a, that's a problem with it long term. And for that reason, I don't like insurance long term. However, I actually agree with the, in the short term, at least he, he may take a long term view. But I actually say in the short term, it is probably a good buy. Okay, so I mean, what would you say the verdict is there? Like, there's maybe a bit of a trade in it, I suppose, just because no, of some of the short-term dynamics. No, I think they're both. Well, not so much. I think they both genuinely think they're buying. You know, higher interest rate environment, this mm. strong pricing power that they have. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, they both really liked it. Okay, there you go. So, will it go to the investment community though? Yeah, double buy. We had three double buys on the call today, so definitely worth watching if you haven't watched it. There you go. The Midas mm. Touch. You might have to get you to do the investment committee too. Of course, it was Danny's uh, first run at uh, the no, call today. It was no, a. No, oh, no, no. I thought you, this was your first time. No, 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 no. I've done it before. Oh, have you? Yes. Second yes. time. Tune in anyway. Third. It's always good. Third. Whatever. <laughs> Just keeps getting better. That's what. Uh, anyway, let's go to our guest for the program. And as always on a Friday afternoon, Shane Oliver from AMP joins us now. Shane. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, obviously, it's been two days of fairly heavy selling. Some, well, I suppose, signs of resilience in the US economy, this higher for longer dynamic, perhaps in rates markets. Is that the story here? Well, well basically, that's the story. I, I think uh, we've been talking about recession or there's been talk of recession in the US for a long time now. It keeps getting pushed out. We have seen the inflation numbers slow down, but economic growth has remained fairly resilient. Obviously, the jobs market part of that. And of course, uh, overnight, we got some quite strong job numbers from a couple of private surveys, one from ADP, I think it's called, um, which is a private survey, a private um, a survey of private payrolls, and it was up almost 500,000 in the month of June. So given the market was expecting payrolls to be up something like 230,000, that's quite a big difference. Uh, and then, of course, we also saw some layoff numbers come from a company called Challenger, Gray, and someone else, and uh, they, they, they've been down. Uh, so those things got the market worried that maybe the jobs market is stronger than expected and that's going to put more pressure on the Fed. So right around major countries, including Australia, you've seen this ratcheting up of expectations regarding how much central banks will hike by and how long they will stay there for. In, in other words, a higher for longer scenario, varied from country to country, but that's probably the main dynamic here. Uh, that's obviously surprised the share market. It's also surprised the bond market. The bond yields have gone up. And those things obviously resulted in the in the uh, back-to-back walls we've had in our market in the last couple of days. Yeah, absolutely, Shane. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because you're seeing ten-year Treasuries. Well, well, here in Australia, well up over, you know, four spot. Well, it was at one point four spot two six percent. Hasn't been there for something like fourteen years. But in the US. That whole regional banking problem, um, the bond route that happened last time caused huge headaches for a lot of those regional banks. Do you think we're going to be, and I noticed I think the Fed's been shrinking their balance sheet um, again. Um, is this, mm. is this a, you know, A, going to cause problems? Are we going to see things starting to break again, do you think? And is this a case of remember they were filling up the general reserves after they lifted the debt ceiling Mm. is this a draining of liquidity as well coming into the markets as they have to fill the tga well they're they're good questions and i suspect there probably is a bit of draining of liquidity uh from the markets uh that's obviously affected bonds uh bond yields have gone up but it's probably also affected uh share markets particularly nasdaq maybe starting to get affected by that. So that was something that I guess we've been talking about for several months now, once the debt ceiling issue is resolved, 
the Treasury will st start to rebuild its uh, deposit at the Fed, takes money uh, by issuing bonds, um, increases the supply of bonds, pushes up their yield, but takes cash out of the economy, so to speak. So that could well be a factor in all of this. Um, and, and I think yeah, more broadly here, you know, you've got to allow that markets, particularly the US market, had a very strong uh, June. This time a week ago, things were very, very positive. And of course, markets got a bit overbought in that sense. Um, and yeah, yeah, when you put all that together with ongoing tightening, worries about the, the labour market being too strong, wages growth, you can sort of understand why markets are having this pullback. I don't necessarily think it's terminal, though. I, I don't think we're going into a new bear market. We've seen lots of these episodes in the past, and I think it's just a, a corrective activity. Um, but that risk of recession is there, and the big risk here is that central banks over-respond to what you call lagging indicators, such as the unemployment rate or wages growth in Australia's case, or even inflation, uh, and ignore the message from leading indicators, which is still down. You know, yield curves are still heavily inverted. Uh, the US leading indicator is still pointing to recession at some point. So all those factors are still there, and the danger is that central banks just over, over egg it, and you end up with a, a much deeper recession or a deeper downturn than we really needed to have. How does it apply to the Australian situation? Because, of course, uh, we haven't spoken since the RBA uh, lifted, uh, sorry, uh, kept re interest rates on hold on Tuesday at 4.1%. I mean, I guess uh, one would assume that if well, we are pricing in this higher for longer dynamic, that might apply to, to Australia as well. So, I mean, how are you seeing the likely mm. path forward for, 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 for interest rates here? I know you have been saying for a little while that you think that, you know, perhaps we've already over tightened. <laughs> well, I, I still think we have over tightened, and I think the Fed is running the risk of doing the same thing. Uh, the, 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 but the reality is, I guess, that <laughs> I, I can't just uh, forecast uh, the Reserve Bank on the basis of what I think they should do. I have to forecast them, try and forecast them on the basis of what they will do. And uh, they've gone a lot further than I would have thought. And it looks to me, given their language, that they'll probably do a bit more in all of this. Uh, and it is noteworthy that uh, the market is something like 53% priced in for a 25 basis point hike at the August meeting. We think they will hike in August. Um, and 100% uh, priced in for um, at least two hikes by December. So by the end of the year, two hikes are priced in. So we think there are two more hikes. They'll probably come in August and September, though. Uh, obviously, the inflation numbers that come out at the end of this month will impact things. The revised forecasts if there are revisions they'll probably revise up their their, their wages forecasts uh in in the next month uh from the rba so those things will probably drive another move in rates and the language we saw on tuesday was very similar to what you saw after the august the april ports where they said this just gives us more time to assess the outlook given the lags given what we've already done uh and um but in the meantime yeah we still think we might have to do more um, so it's similar language to what you saw back then. So I guess the question is, how, how does what's going on in the US affect Australia? I mean, you've got to sort of see what the payrolls do tonight to see whether uh, the, the action in the US is sort of uh, more than just a, a couple of days wonder. Um, if the payrolls are soft, in contrast to the recent data, then that would change things a lot. But if it's, if it's on the solid side, then you know, to the extent that the Fed is still raising rates, then it does run the risk that you know, we end up following along with them to some degree because the, the, the Reserve Bank doesn't want the Aussie dollar to go down too much and add to inflationary pressures. So, so they are influenced by what's going on in the US to some degree, uh, and you've seen that in their references to sticky services inflation. Uh, so that's why there's been a flow onto our market today, in other words, because we're not entirely immune to what's going on in the US. Indeed. Uh, one quick one about the psychology of our central bankers at the moment, because uh, someone made a really, uh, I think, um, interesting comment uh, in an interview that this, they've almost lost their confidence because of uh, how they got it wrong in terms of transitory. And possibly mm. their policy responses now are becoming overzealous in terms of we really don't want to repeat you know, yet again, that thing of the Arthur Burns of the 70s. And so they become more Volcker-esque in their, their stance. But something that you keep alluding to or keep time and again, we're looking at data that's very much in the rear vision mirror. So do you think their mm. confidence has been rocked in this cycle? So they're being blinded by the fact that it is, I know they're pausing, but they continue to have quite hawkish rhetoric coming out. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, it's a reasonable point. I, 
I think they they uh, they lost a bit of credibility there with the transitory comments, and and then before that, uh, the the comments that it's going to be a long time before they raise interest rates. So that that sort of you know I, I think affected their confidence, and not just in Australia but also globally. And so they're they're now trying to prove that they are tough on inflation, that they're not going to uh, let inflation get out of hand, they're not going to repeat the Arthur Burns experience of the nineteen. 19- 70s, or you might say the the Richard Nixon experience. Um, so that that uh, is, um, I think, something that's it's you know a big factor here. Uh, and so you could have had a situation where, if you look back through history, some of this surge in inflation may look to be transitory. You know, it, two years doesn't look transitory when you're going through it. But when you look back in history, it might turn out to be a transitory spike in inflation, just another shock due to the pandemic. You know, if you go back three years ago, we were worried about depression. Uh, that huge hit to economic activity at the time. Then we get this huge rebound. All of those things turned out to be transitory. The inflation shock is another factor flowing from the the pandemic, and it could turn out to be that way too. But in the meantime, of course, central banks run the risk that having got it wrong in the sense that transitory was thought to mean a couple of months, six months maybe, um, they then over-tighten, and what is still transitory in in a couple of years' sense they, they still end up over-tightening and then uh, plunging economies into recession and end up undershooting on inflation at some point. So that risk is certainly there. Um, and you're right, they, they are looking in the rear view mirror here, the inflation numbers, wages growth numbers, uh, unemployment, they're all lagging indicators. They're not, they're not leading indicators. Things like confidence, consumer confidence, um, building approvals, uh, those, those are the sort of things that are leading indicators and they're all, most of them are pointing down, not up. And uh, I, I do worry that central banks, including our own, is perhaps giving a bit too much weight to the lagging indicators. I can sort of understand where they're coming from, given the, the whipsawing they've seen and also the desire to keep inflation expectations down. Um, but, but I think there is a higher risk that we end up overdoing it here. Shane, uh, of course, we are all on edge after a fairly precarious couple of days. Um, we'll leave it on that note, perhaps, but uh, we do hope you have a wonderful weekend. I do appreciate your time, as always, Dr. Shane Oliver from AMP Capital. Okay. Great, thanks. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting next six months, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're at the midpoint of the year. Yeah. It's been such a stellar, I think it was a 15% rise in the S&P 500 Correct. since day one this year. So that's yeah. pretty extraordinary. Nobody expected that, and rightly no. so, because... You know, the fundamentals really haven't changed that much. No. But, you know, we discussed, we had a, I had a great interview with Alan McFarlane just yeah. before discussing AI, where he explained it in depth and what companies are doing worth watching um, because obviously that AI theme and, you know, the, the magnificent seven, um, you know, took markets off to new highs. But reality seems to be uh, coming back to earth with a thump. What was his message? Believe the hype or... Oh, uh, no, it's overblown? real. Yeah, it's okay. very real. Very, very real. Yeah, it's... We- definitely... Really like a fake way because, you know, AI is... No, no. <laughs> no, I mean, clearly valuations were, were bubble-like, but mm. understanding the technology and what's actually going on is really important so that you appreciate um, the magnitude of what is actually happening here. We could uh, obviously riff on that for a while, um, maybe for another day, of course, Danny. Correct. But uh, we'll go to the leaders and laggards now because, well, we'll start with the leaders, few and far between, and the, the, the uh, gains were relatively small. But Regis Resources, we spoke off yep. the top, um, some good news there today out of its production update. So well rewarded by shareholders despite the, the broader doom and gloom. Um, Elders just bouncing. We, we sort of spoke about that uh, during the week. Uh, didn't we oversold conditions perhaps yeah and totally investors... i think there was an upgrade to a buy oh, recommendation was, was i think oh. yeah bell potter i'm not don't quote me on that but there was uh, another broker coming out and saying uh, upgrading that to a buy there you go okay so there are some of the names there that uh, did perform well today now to the laggards which were much uh well there was far far more of those yeah, uh st barbara down by further oh, 8.3%. still adjusting to those asset sales yeah and whatever must, that's going on yeah must do um or must be um, Resolute Mining, Junior, West Gold. There, there was also a sell-off in the gold price, though. Yeah, um, well, overnight. there would be. Yeah, with reacting the to the bond in, markets. And in, in yields, of course, yeah. yeah. So um, that happened after that PMI survey. You um, need to bring your real yields out if we're going to look real at gold. Yeah, 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 because real yields have to fall for gold to perform. Well, what? Yes, typically, uh, yes, the case. So um, obviously, 
Gold uh, losing its luster just a little bit at the moment. Um, let's go to the small caps. Look at the leaders and laggards there as well. Uh, Drone Shield. Shield, back up again. There you go, bounced. Um, was it It was you who went? No, 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 oh, it's Tessa. Oh, Tessa, of course, who's not, not here today. But yeah, that was a good interview. Um, a really interesting company, and I suppose it's always just one you know, military contract somewhere around the world away yeah. from a, from a you know, face ripping rally. Um, there you go, some of the other small caps rising today. Uh, laggards, small caps, I expect to see some big drops here. Uh, Burgundy D Mines. Yep. Um, grandmother used to love Burgundy. Aeris <laughs> Resources, bless her soul. Uh, Santa Barbara, also on yep. that list as well, interestingly, perhaps. That oh dear, that a, looks like an oopsie doopsie. That's probably an oopsie doopsie. Oh well, it's a Friday. Full of oopsie doopsies. So, big uh, news tonight. Yeah, NFPs. <laughs> Expected to be a strong number too. So, forecast is for a 3.6% jobless rate. That's down from 3.7 and a 224,000. Increase in employment, which is down from last month, but still at a pace very much consistent with yep. a strong economy. So I guess if you're having a, a few after Friday night drinks, you might actually be awake when this comes up. Well, this is a good time of uh, <laughs> the best thing about this time of the year is that it's about ten thirty. So exactly. You can, so you can actually wake you can, up you can and have see. a few drinks, get a, get 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 to bed at an appropriate hour, and <laughs> well, I mean, if it's if it's rough enough, you're caught on the wrong side of it. You can just keep drinking, I suppose. Yeah, but don't put any orders on. It's like drinking and dialing. <laughs> don't drink. <laughs> And trade. <laughs> yeah, we've all done that once. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's the thing with these, uh, you know, trading platforms nowadays. You can, yeah, you can twenty-four to, hours almost. Yeah, it's you need a you need a drone clock on one of those things. Um, anyway, uh, Lagarde, uh, Lagarde speaks, and there's also Canadian employment data, which will also be interesting because of the BOC, I think, uh, meets next week. So um, let's just check in and see where they close. Yes, um, and actually, while you do that, sir, I'll check on what's happened. I've for the week. got the ASX uh, 200 down 121 points, one spot 69%, 7,042. The SIBO 200 down 1.62%, also down 22 points. So it was a grim day. We pretty much not. We didn't close on the lows, but we certainly didn't close uh, at higher levels uh, mm. of the day. So, yeah, going in, I suppose a lot of people too, a lot of traders would have been taking risk off going into these numbers overnight. Don't forget that because apart from the bond market moving, nobody's going to want to go in long. But hopefully they didn't go in short either because it could go either which way. Yeah, it will be a volatile event, one, one would imagine. And uh, we're down 2.24% for the week. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty dour week overall. But, um, again, we could continue forever. We won't. We'll let uh, everybody get to their weekend. Um, but remember, you can catch up on all the content, well, from the whole week, but especially today on your website and app. It was a negative day, but we hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you on Monday morning. <laughs>